Hello, so this is A Level Physics, and today we are going to start with October November 22, paper 1, variant 2. So let's start with question number 1. Question number 1 says that which quantity is a physical quantity? So D is the appropriate answer because it is a physical quantity, the rest are units and types. Question number two says that what is 3.7 megawatts when expressed in kilowatts? So C is the appropriate answer. Question number three says that there are two pointers of position of a pointer and the extension. What is the percentage uncertainty in the extension? So subtracting two values would give us 250 minus 20, 225, 25 and the uncertainties would add up so they would become 4 and the percentage uncertainty would be 4 over 25 and uh, become 16 percent so D is the appropriate answer. Question number 4 says that what is the difference between a scalar quantity and a vector quantity? So C is the appropriate answer. It says that a vector quantity has direction and scalar quantity does not. Question number 5 says that uh, an object uh, uh, is moving on a circular track with speed of 0.5 and it takes 40 seconds for complete lap. It says what's the velocity, average velocity at 20 seconds and at 40 seconds. At 40 seconds, the displacement is zero, so the velocity is zero. At 20 seconds, we can uh, evaluate the circumference by S is equals to Vt as 20 meters. So equaling it to 2 pi r would give us r as 3.18. So for, a, for half lap, it would be 2r. So 2r would be 2 into 3.18 divided by 20 seconds. So the velocity at 20 second average velocity would be 0 0.32. So A is the appropriate answer. Question number 6 says that a uh, velocity time graph is given. What's the displacement time graph? It's a sine curve. So integration of sine is minus cos. So A seems to be the appropriate answer. Question number 7 says that a train moves with constant velocity and a uniform acceleration at what time do they meet so for the constant one the velocity is 10 so the displacement expression would be 10 t for the constant acceleration the velocity time expression would be v is equal to half t so the displacement expression would be t squared by 4 equaling them up gives t equals 40 Question number 8 says that what is the change in momentum if force F and mass M times Tx? So change in momentum is Ft, so C is the appropriate answer. Question number 9 says that uh, on the surface an object has mass 1 kg P and weight 1 newton. So the acceleration or the G of P is 1. So what are the mass and weight of the same object planet Q? So according to the expression, it's given that it is one tenth of Q. So the acceleration of Q would be 10 meters per second squared and weight of Q would be mg, which is m is already given as 1 kg into 10 as 10 kg. So question number 10 says that in which forces is air resistance greater than the weight? So at C, the drag is greater than weight. So C is the appropriate answer. Basically, that's the moment when the parachute opens and then it becomes the terminal velocity is reached at T. So question number 11 says that uh, two balls are moving. What is the speed of sphere? Right? That's a repeated question. So relative speed of approach equals relative speed of separation. So u1 minus u2 equals minus v1 minus v2. So v2 is 8 meters per second. t is the appropriate answer. Question number 12 says that which is not necessary requirement of force in a couple. So a, b, c all are the requirements. d is the appropriate answer. Question number 13 says that a box 
of 12 centimeter and weight 0.43 newton so we have shown the weight over here is a horizontal with greater pivot of edge and it says the a uniform sphere of diameter 2 is placed what is the mass of the sphere so we need to see the weight of the sphere and apply clockwise equals anti-clockwise 0.43 <coughs> into 3.6 that's our pivot so w into 1.2 finding w divided by 9.8 would give us 0.13 kg so b is the appropriate answer question number <coughs> 14 says that a uh, <coughs> force diagram is given what is the mass of the object just we need to do is upward forces equals to downward forces so uh, 410 sine 60 plus 210 sine 10 equals W so W would be 391.53 and the mass would be divided by 9.81 so a 40 kg is the appropriate answer question number 15 says that a solid cube is floating in equilibrium in liquid memory the solid is made of iron of density 7900 the cube floats with 42% of its volume of the, above the surface of the mercury. What is the density of the mercury? Uh, so density is basically mass over volume. So mass could be written as density into volume. Density is 7900 and the total volume is V. And the volume which is being considered is 42 percent of the volume is above so the uh, in contact volume is 40 58 percent so that's 0 0.58 v volume so the dense uh, 7900 divided by 0 0.58 makes 14,000 so c is the appropriate answer question number 816 says that what is the ratio of the liquid on the base of P and what is the uh, pressure due to liquid on the base of Q and it says that uh, the liquid in the vessel P is twice so we can see that pressure is equal to rho GH and rho GH so 2 rho GH cancels 2 over 1 so A is the appropriate answer question number 17 says that a motor is used to lift a load vertically upwards the load has weight W the motor produces use of power, power P the load is lifted at constant velocity which expression gives the time taken for the motor to lift the load, ver load vertically upwards through the distance so power input power is energy over time and energy is FD and FD is the weight into distance over pop uh, over time so making T the subject makes it WD over P so C is the appropriate answer Question number 18 says that a lamp is switched on for 2 hours. <coughs> the power input to the lamp is 1 watt. The energy given out by the lamp is 7 into 10 to the power 3 joules. How much energy is converted to other forms by the lamp? So it's basically asking about the dissipated energy. So the output energy is 7 into 10 to the power 3 and the input energy is E is equal to PT. Power is 1 watt. Time is 2 hours. 2 hours means 2 into 60 minutes 60 seconds so this makes up 7200 energy input and 7000 is the energy output so the difference in energy is 200 joules so B is the appropriate answer question number 19 says that <clears throat> an object of mass M is dropped onto a surface which have no atmosphere the height from the which the object is dropped and change in the gravitational potential energy of object for each planet is given what is the acceleration of the free fall near the sphere y the acceleration of free fall near the surface of planet x is gx so you can simply convert it change in e is mgh mgx into 3 and that is 4 times of e so that means 12 mgx so equaling them up 12 mgx equals 4 mg uh, m 4 mgy because the height is 4 so you can find gy as 3gx so c is the appropriate answer question number 20 says 
that which statements regarding the strain of the wire, which two measurements enable the strain of the wire to be calculated, the unstretched length and the extension of the wire. Because it is extension over length. Question number 21 says that a wire is stretched by two forces which graph could this graph needs to be shown that's and it said that what could represent this so we can we know that a half fe represents force versus extension so rep uh, replacing f is equal to k instead of f makes k square so this graph could be of extension versus energy which is energy is directly proportional to square root of e so that's the graph of square root of e so part a becomes the proper answer if it was e versus e versus e e versus e so that would have been a this sort of graph so question number 22 says that <clears throat> which diagram shows the variation so just for instantaneous motion of wave just consider the motion opposite to the wave so uh, the wave is traveling from left to right consider the motion of p from right to left so it is it becomes d Question number 23 says that which statement about progressive wave and longitudinal wave is correct? So answer is B. Transverse waves can be polarized but longitudinal waves cannot be polarized. Question number 24 says that a loudspeaker initially at rest, so initial velocity is 0, falls from a vertical height. When the speaker has fallen a distance 10 meter, the S displacement is 10 meter, it for a short pulse of sound a constant frequency constant frequency means that the source frequency is given in all directions the pulse of the sound traveling at a speed of 330 that means that the speed of sound is given it is heard there by a person leaning out the window so the when he would be leaning out the the speaker would be moving away from him so that's a, a case of moving away so what is the frequency of the pulse observed so f naught is to be found but the thing is that we do not know the source velocity, the velocity with which the speaker was moving. So we can calculate it from the equation of motions. U is 0, A is 9.81, S is 10. So V square minus U square equal to 2AS. And V is equal to square root of 2AS, which is 2 into 9.81 into 10 square root, which makes up 14 meters per second. So that's the source velocity. Just insert it in the formula. It's given in the data sheet. F S V over V plus vs so that makes 246 hertz question number 25 says that two electromagnetic waves have wavelengths this what should that's a recall question and the answer is b thanks for watching